Good evening, and a very warm welcome to uh, BCP Evening Prayer this evening uh, on the 16th of May, the Sunday after Ascension, here in St. Andrew's Church in one church. And uh, as these things are, uh, technical things earlier on, it means that we're live rather than pre-recorded, but hopefully that's fine. Uh, interestingly, um, this is an evening where I don't know if you can hear the, the church echoing to the rain that is presently falling outside, uh, but we gather wherever we are, uh, safe in the knowledge that we are dry and not out in the rain this evening. If you're joining uh, via the app, uh, it's the BCP, so you might want to change to the traditional language on the, on the app. And if you are using the BCP Book of Common Prayer book, then we're on page 17. So just spend a moment gathering our thoughts as we come to evening prayer this evening. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Dearly beloved, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech you, as many as are here, to accompany with me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, as we say together. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent, and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that, the, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
and say together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. We turn to our psalm, and this evening it's psalm number 147, reading verses 1 to 12. Psalm 147. O oh, praise the Lord, for it is a good thing to sing praises unto our God. Yea, a joyful and pleasant thing it is to be thankful. The Lord doth build up Jerusalem and gather together the outcasts of Israel. He healeth those that are broken in heart and giveth medicine to heal their sickness. He telleth the number of the stars and calleth them by all their names. Great is our Lord, and great is his power, yea, and his wisdom is infinite. The Lord setteth up the meek, and bringeth the ungodly down to the ground. O sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving, sing praises upon the harp unto our God, who covereth the heaven with clouds, and prepareth rain for the earth, and maketh the grass to grow upon the mountains, and herb for the use of men who giveth fodder unto the cattle, and feedeth the young ravens that call upon him. He hath no pleasure in the strength of an horse, neither delighteth he in any man's legs. But the Lord's delight is in them that fear him, and put their trust in his mercy. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise thy God, O Zion. We turn now to our first reading, and this evening we read in Isaiah's uh, book, Isaiah chapter 61. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendour. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. Aliens will shepherd their flocks. Foreigners will work your fields and vineyards. And you will be called priests of the Lord, you will be named ministers of our God. You will feed on the wealth of nations, and in their riches you will boast. Instead of their shame, my people will receive a double portion, and instead of disgrace, they will rejoice in their inheritance. And so they will inherit a double portion in their land, 
and everlasting joy will be theirs. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and iniquity. In my faithfulness, I will reward them and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants will be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them will acknowledge that they are a people the Lord has blessed. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the soil makes the young plant come up, and a garden causes seeds to grow, so the Sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. Here ends our first reading. Join together in the words of the Magnificat on page 19 of the, of the book. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath holpen his servant Israel as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham, and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We turn to our New Testament reading this evening, and it's in Luke's Gospel, chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, reading verses 14 to 21. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread through the whole countryside. He taught in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. And he stood up to read. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written. The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him, and he began by saying to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Here ends our second lesson. Join in the words of the Nuck Dimittis. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So a few words on our readings this, this evening. It's the Sunday after Ascension Day, and the lectionary, lectionary rewards us in many ways with the promises of a reminder of God's provision. And we are shown the continuity of his promises. What Jesus reads in the synagogue at Nazareth is what we heard earlier in Isaiah 61, except, of course, we heard the whole of that chapter. It is good to place it, to remind ourselves of the importance of the Old Testament in our understanding of God's story and of God's relationship with the world. Now, that reading acknowledges the injustices of the world that we create. The figure described, the one whom the Lord has anointed, has come to bring a reversal of fortunes to those in various states of destitution and deprivation. Those to be the recipients of the work of the Spirit-filled Anointed One are the brokenhearted, the afflicted, the captives, those bound by the world. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, the recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. To some extent, we have all been that, we have all been there, and we continue to be in that place on different occasions, because we all have our vulnerabilities and our issues. And hopefully, that recognition of that within us means that we will always be able to have empathy with those around us to see and respond to the needs of others amongst us who share in the vulnerabilities, who share in their failings, who are perhaps worse off than us. It is part of that revolutionary Jesus, the one that turns things on their head, that we hear that he has come for those destitute, the brokenhearted. He hasn't come for those who are holier than thou, those who stand proud, and believe that they have everything that they need. In fact, God does come for those because, of course, they haven't found their true place in God's kingdom. They are destitute of humility, of knowing that they are God's creation, that they rely on God as much as anyone else in this world. And it's hugely rich imagery that we're rewarded as we're rewarded with as well. When we go back into Isaiah 61 itself, we have th these wonderful uh, pictures of, of the wedding where the bridegroom adorns his head like a priest. Um, and as we think of some priests who were, who were anointed with oil that ran down through the hair, even down the beard and, and onto their shoulders. Some other imagery from the Old Testament. And a bride that adorns herself with her jewels to make herself look perfect. And we're reminded that the church is called the bride to Christ the groom. May we adorn ourselves to be ready to be Christ's. But it's a full, rich image of this wonderful wedding celebration that's taking place. And we move on to more agricultural, more natural imagery as well. For as the soil makes the young plant come up, and a garden causes seeds to grow. Again, yes, we've just had a whole deluge of rain, and that will help the grass to grow, the, the seeds to grow that you may have planted this week. It's a rich, full image of, of abundance, that the, the, the soil and the young plant, the, these images of youth, of growth, of just building and building, the, the, growing taller and taller in fullness of, um, of, of what we expect of our plants. And as we think of that rich wedding imagery, that rich greenery that, that develops around us, it's so, so the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. So we will see justice, we will see righteousness, we will see grace 
and we will want to praise because of what we have received. That's the call upon us. Jesus steps into that position. He goes into the synagogue and announces himself as the one who is anointed. He stands and boldly declares, I am he. Let's see that actual line once more, or hear that line once more at the end of the Gospel reading. And he began by saying to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. This is he who comes to bring all that that passage from Isaiah promises, to bring justice, to bring grace and mercy to deal with the brokenhearted, to release the captives, to bring freedom, to bring a fullness of life for each one of us. It's the most wonderful of promises. It's the most glorious of promises. And it's there for each one of us to grasp, to take hold of and never let go. Even when we will stumble, even when we will fall occasionally, Christ is there for us reaching down for us. And of course, we're reminded once more that we're in this period between Ascension and Pentecost, when if we imagine the disciples, in the, in, when this first happened, they would have gone back to the upper room, back to that time together, praying and fellowshipping, maybe a bit nervous, what is this Holy Spirit that has been promised? What will it do for us? But they're waiting. They're waiting to see what is going to come. There's a great, great power on the way. And of course, at the start of the, the Gospel reading, we're reminded that Jesus, it says that Jesus, in the power of the Spirit, was speaking, went into the synagogue and brought um, that word to them. It's a great time to be waiting. It's a great time to be hoping for, for what is to come. Of course, we know that we have the Holy Spirit that, that was released all those years ago. But maybe this week you might want to just spend that time waiting. Spend, imagine yourself as a disciple at some point, wondering what's around the corner, hoping for the full release of the Spirit and, and for a great outpouring of his power in your ministry, in your giftings, in whatever you do, but also to see the Holy Spirit flow through your neighbourhood, through your community, through this town and this parish, that all might know something of God's grace, of his mercy, of his peace and of his joy. And as we reflect on that, what then would our response be? In many ways, it's very, very simple. We are thankful and we can go back to our psalm and write at the start. Oh, praise the Lord, for it is a good thing to sing praises unto our God. Yea, a joyful and pleasant thing it is to be thankful. And right at the end, verse 12 of the passage we heard this evening, praise the Lord. Oh, praise your God. So I hope and pray that this evening you might know God, you might know him afresh, that as you wait on him, you will hear new things for your life, for your family, for your community, and that we would know God amongst us, that we might reflect God, that others may see the joy and the beauty of God. What a hope, what a joy to anticipate it. And let us always be thankful and praise God. Amen. And so we come to share the creed. And if you're using the books, that's on page 22. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. And our collect for today, the Sunday after Ascension. O God, the King of glory, who hast exalted thine only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph unto thy kingdom in heaven, we beseech thee, leave us not comfortless, but send to us thine Holy Ghost to comfort us and exalt us into the same place whither our Saviour Christ is gone before, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end, Amen. And we collect for peace. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quiet through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. And the Collect for Aid Against All Perils. Light in our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we come to our intercessions. And as we pray, we call to mind all those things that are on our hearts this evening. And there will be a pause later that we might indeed concentrate our thoughts and our prayers in that time. But we pray for all those still affected by the pandemic around the globe, for the vaccination programme, for countries that are um, really feeling the, the pandemic at this time for our own situation. We pray for places where there is no peace and pray especially in the Middle East, in the situation between Israel and Gaza at this time, as the UN steps in or seeks to mediate a peace there. And we'll pray for all those that we know who are struggling with their health or in any way at this time. So let us pray.
O Lord, our heavenly Father, high and mighty, King of kings, Lord of lords, the only ruler of princes, who dost from thy throne behold all the dwellers upon earth. Most heartily we beseech thee with thy favour to behold our most gracious sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, and so replenish her with the grace of thy Holy Spirit, that she may always incline to thy will and walk in thy way. Endue her plenteously with heavenly gifts, grant her in health and wealth long to live. Strengthen her that she may vanquish and overcome all her enemies. And finally, after this life, she may attain everlasting joy and felicity through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, we humbly beseech thee to bless Charles, Prince of Wales, and all the royal family. Endue them with thy heavenly spirit. Enrich them with thy heavenly grace. Prosper them with all happiness, and bring them to thine everlasting kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who alone workest great marvels, send down upon our bishops and curates and all congregations committed to their charge the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee, pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honour of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us pause for a moment as we bring our own petitions and our own prayers before our loving God this evening. Almighty God, who hast given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfil now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. And we finish with the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. So thank you for joining this evening with Evening Prayer. And I pray that in this week ahead, as we look forward to Pentecost next week, that you might join with the Thy Kingdom Come initiative that you might be praying for those five folk that you have um, chosen to, to pray for this week. Or just be closer to God, praying for your community around you. And as you do that, receive God's peace. The peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. I pray you have a good week ahead of you.